everyone and welcome to the latest Economist Intelligence Unit Global Outlook video. My name is Agathe Marin, I'm the Global Forecasting Director at EIU. I'm joined today by Matt Oxenford, a senior analyst in our Europe team based in London. Today we're going to discuss the outlook for Germany and the Eurozone amid mounting fears of a prolonged and widespread cutoff in Russian gas supplies. So Matt, I'm going to turn to you for a first question. The Nord Stream pipeline is operating at very reduced capacity. How will, do you think, Germany cope this winter without possibly Russian gas? Thanks, Agat. Well, this has been a risk that EIU has been highlighting for Germany and the Eurozone since the initial invasion in February, and the government in Germany has taken some steps to prepare. They've secured the use of a floating storage regasification unit to import LNG, which is due at the end of this year. They've stepped up the imports of LNG through neighboring countries with existing capacity. They've agreed to reactivate many of their mothballed coal power plants and are looking at nuclear power as well. And they're also looking at encouraging demand reduction through things like public transport use. But at this point, they've really only reached about about 66% of their full storage capacity, which is roughly in line with the EU average, and for comparison is below the levels they were at in this, for this time around 2019 or 2020, and far below the 90% target they're hoping to reach by November. Even if they do reach this target, however, the amount of Russian gas in Germany uh, in a tip that Germany imports in a typical winter is larger than their total storage capacity. And they currently don't have enough import capacity, even when this new LNG terminal comes online, to replace the lost import capacity from Russia without dr drastic reductions in demand. The government has moved, therefore, to the second phase of its emergency gas cutoff plan, with the third phase, which may happen next uh, later in this winter, consisting of rationing and auctioning of gas to industrial clients. That may have significant impact on the German economy. A lot of Germany's flagship industries, such as chemicals, the production of steel and other materials, such as cement and ceramics, are highly energy intensive, and they use gas for a lot of their industrial processes. There's also a debate to, which, to what extent households will have to uh, either pay more or face restrictions on how they use their gas in the winter to discourage overuse, which is going to be highly politically sensitive for the still relatively new government. The EU is trying to intervene by um, developing a new proposal for countries to reduce gas demand by 15%, but this has um, received a significant pushback in countries such as Spain, Portugal, and Greece that are going to be less severely affected by Russian gas cutoff. At the same time, their gas interconnection to Germany and Central Europe are limited enough that the, their gas cutoff wouldn't really be able to help solve the problem in Germany. In short, the impact of this on the German economy is going to be severe. German growth has already lagged most of the G7 from COVID, and the costs of coming of importing this much new gas has led to Germany's month, first monthly trade deficit since shortly after reunification in 1991. The industrial sector is likely to see significant contraction, and German business confidence has collapsed, showing no sign of recovering. We're currently downgrading our forecast for Germany significantly for both 2022 and 2023, with a major contraction all but inevitable. And so if Germany is facing what looks increasingly likely to be a huge recession, uh, what does that mean for the Eurozone this year and next? Well, Germany sits at the center of most European supply chains, particularly in Central and Eastern Europe, where are, which are also all facing their own risks of a cutoff. This is going to be most acute in sectors that are particularly gas intensive, but it'll also carry through to other sectors, such as the automotive sector, which are highly integrated in Germany, and which will be depressed by this collapse in German business confidence. Over the short term, the reintroduction of coal power is also going to have an environmental impact, with Germany falling behind and reaching its ambitions, uh, ambitious emissions targets. Um, the risk of slow growth will drag into 2023 and beyond, even if Germany does get through this winter. Its gas stocks are likely to be depleted to such record low levels so that the process of acquiring significant gas to get through next winter uh, will be even more arduous and costly. Germany's already had to take a 30% stake in its largest energy provider to cover the cost of disruption in this market, and it's probably going to have to remain active in this space for some time. The trade and fiscal balances in Germany are also going to have to remain depressed um, as the need for acquiring new gas in this tight market weighs on the public finances and the trade balance. There's very little chance that this is going to ever change. Uh, there's very little chance of a rapprochement with Russia, even if some sort of negotiated settlement is reached in the war, which we still think is highly unlikely. Russia is going to be viewed as an unreliable trading partner effectively permanently, and is not going to be reintegrated into global European gas systems. However, eventually the markets will readjust as new gas supply comes online globally and Germany develops the necessary infrastructure to import it through more LNG terminals. 
The urgency of the situation is likely to accelerate the deployment of renewables as well over the coming years. However, the next few years will really be touch and go. Thanks so much, Matt. You can always find our latest analysis and white papers on our website, www.eiu.com. Thanks for watching us today and see you next month. Goodbye.